Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news at 6 on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are this evening's headlines. President Pranam Mukherjee frowns upon disruptions in both houses of parliament, calls the frequent protests unacceptable, says parliamentary freedom shouldn't be misused by causing disruptions. Rajya Sabha witnesses adjournments on demonetization. Opposition targets government over the alleged deaths caused by the hardships unleashed by the move. Lok Sabha also witnesses similar scenes. On the 30th day of the demonetization exercise, Prime Minister Narendra Modi calls it a yagna against the evil of corruption, insists that this short-term pain will pave way for long-term gains. And Allahabad High Court criticizes practice of triple talaq, calls it cruel and demeaning. Political leaders welcome the order. All India Muslim Personal Law Board says that the verdict is against Sharia laws. Well, with the parliament logjam entering the third week and no signs of a breakthrough in sight, President Pranam Mukherjee today came down heavily on parliamentarians. The president said daily disruption of parliament is not acceptable at all, directing MPs to do their job of transacting legislative business. For God's sake, do your job. You are meant to transact business. You are meant to Devote your time for exercising the authorities of the members, particularly of Lok Sabha members, over money and finance. President Pranam Mukherjee's strong rebuke aimed at parliamentarians on Thursday, as repeated disruptions and adjournments threaten a near washout of the winter session. Addressing a seminar on electoral reforms for a stronger democracy, the president said parliamentary freedom should not be misused by causing disruptions adding that daily disruption of parliament is not acceptable at all. Disruption is totally unacceptable in the parliamentary system. People send the representatives to speak, not to sit in dharna, or not to create any trouble on the floor. For that, streets are still available. Only few weeks in, the week, uh, in a year, our parliaments are in session. For demonstration, you can choose any other places. President Mukherjee also paced for the passage of the Women's Reservation Bill in Lok Sabha that is pending since long. Our population is almost 50 percent, little less than that. But representation is abysmally low. It is totally unacceptable. And the experiences of 16 Lok Sabha elections, it has been seen. Whatever be the reasons, political parties are not magnanimous enough to give adequate number of representations to the women in the parliament. The ongoing winter session of parliament has been hit by protests and adjournments, with the united opposition aggressively taking on the government on demonetization. Opposition parties have been demanding a debate on the issue under a rule that entails voting and in the presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. They are also seeking an apology from the Prime Minister for accusing opposition parties of supporting black money. Bureau report, Rajya Sapa TV. Well, a united opposition sought to corner the government in the upper house on Thursday on the issue of uh, demonetization. The opposition parties insisted on condoling the loss of lives allegedly due to the withdrawal of high-value currency notes. The government, however, slammed the opposition for causing obstruction and pressed for a discussion. The standoff led to several adjournments through the day. The opposition continued its tirade against the government over the demonetization issue on Thursday, one month after the decision was first announced. Up in the ante against the government, leader of opposition Gulam Nabi Azad alleged that more than 100 people have died due to the ill-conceived decision and demanded that an obituary reference be made for them. How can treasury benches agitate? 
उनको श्रद्धांजलि हमने बाहर पार्लियामेंट के बाहर दे दी ये शर्म की बात है कि सरकार के लिए The TMC and the BSP also joined ranks in condemning the government's decision. More than 100 people have died in the queue, and we are, sir, sir, one second, please, please, please. Where the discussion starts? The dead people. Who can you be? No, no. Sir, we are talking about the dead people. Do you have a? Do you have a zero hour? We are talking of the poor people who are benefited by this government decision, this corrupt decision of the government. Dead should be mourned, sir. Dead should be mourned. All right. Not to be offended. Okay, fine. Refuting all the claims, the government urged the opposition to resume the discussion on demonetization. What is this? They are coming here in front of What is this? They are coming here in front of me. Amit Shah verbal duels between the Treasury and the opposition benches, zero hour and question hour were washed away. Even in the post-lunch session, the protests remained unabated. With no visible respite, the chair adjourned the House till Friday. House stands adjourned till With inputs from Vishal Dhaya, Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, no legislative business could be transacted in the Lok Sabha even on Thursday. Opposition parties continued with their demand for a discussion on demonetization under Rule 184, which entails voting. The government, however, maintained that it's ready for a debate only under Rule 193, with neither side budging. Protests continued in the House, forcing repeated adjournments. Proceedings in the Lok Sabha were disrupted for the 15th consecutive day on Thursday as opposition parties continued to demand a debate on demonetization under a rule that entails voting. Amid the din, the Parliamentary Affairs Minister reiterated that the government was ready for a discussion under Rule 193. Once again, I am through you appealing the Congress, Trinamool and other opposition parties that if they want to start the discussion on re-monetization under 193, as moved by our uh, TRS Honorable Member Jitendra Reddy, we are ready. But unfortunately, they have not supported the supplementary demand for grants also, the appropriation bills, bill also. We expected that they will be debating on these two important bills, which concerns everybody. But at the same time, they are running away from the debate. They are not participating in the debate. They are not participating in the crusade against the black money and corruption. We are ready even now also if we are ready. The Congress and other opposition parties, however, insisted on a discussion under Rule 184 that entails division. हम डिस्कशन से भागने वाले नहीं हैं। अब तो बहुत दिन हो गए नहीं। रूल 184 में। As the din continued, Speaker Sumitra Mahajan warned of strict action against those disturbing any member called to speak by the chair. House तो disturb आप कर ही रहे हो अपना अधिकार मान के, लेकिन जब कोई सदस्य बोलता है, उस सदस्य का भी उतना ही अधिकार है, वो भी चुनाव हुआ जनप्रतिनिधि है। और इसलिए किसी सदस्य के सामने आकर के उसको डिस्टर्ब करना ये कदापि उचित नहीं है ये यहाँ पे हो रहा है मैं चाहूँगी आगे आप इस बात को थोड़ा सा ध्यान में रखो ताकि हमें कोई कड़ा कदम नहीं उठाना पड़े। With protesting members refusing to relent, the speaker adjourned the house for the day. With inputs from Pranav Goswami and Ravindra Sharan, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, with the parliament logjam entering the third week and no signs of a breakthrough in sight, President Pranam Mukherjee came down heavily on parliamentarians. In fact, the president said daily disruption of parliament is not acceptable, directing MPs to do their job of transacting legislative business. Meanwhile, of course, uh, the prime minister also came out and uh, uh, tweeted and uh, he said uh, in a series of tweets marking uh, the 30 days since demonetization took place, he came out and thanked the people of the country and said, that demonetization has been a success. It has caused a little bit of pain, but the larger gains are to be watched out for. Amid the opposition protests against demonetization in Parliament, Prime Minister Narendra Modi took to Twitter on Thursday to talk about the decision. Modi referenced the gains from demonetization and saluted those supporting what he called the yagna of demonetization. 
the prime minister said the short term pain from the exercise will give way for long term gains he said demonetization will mean that the progress and prosperity of rural india would no longer be curtailed by corruption pm modi also appealed to the youth while insisting that the country now has a historic opportunity to move towards a cashless economy the prime minister insisted that the measures will empower the poor and the middle class besides benefiting future generations the prime minister's tweets on the issue come on the 30th day of demonetization exercise that has triggered hardships for many people especially the rural economy that is largely dependent on cash transactions bureau report rajya sabha tv well finance minister arun jaitley addressed a press conference today as his government's demonetization exercise completed a month outlining the steps taken by the government to address uh, the uh, hardships faced by people jaitley announced a slew of measures to popularize a cashless economy some of these measures include petrol and diesel being made cheaper by 0.75% uh, for uh, people using digital wallets 0.5% discount on suburban railway tickets for users of digital wallets as well and nabard giving rupee cards to people who have kisan credit cards let's listen in jahan tak sambhav ho arthvyavastha ka economy ka jo cash transaction hai wo kam ho aur uske substitution mein डिजिटल ट्रांजेक्शन आगे बढ़े कैश के साथ डील करना इसके इकोनॉमिक कॉस्ट भी हैं और पूरे डेमोक्रेटिक सिस्टम में भी इसका एक कॉस्ट है जो इनबिल्ट है कुछ कॉस्ट अपेरेंट है कुछ इनबिल्ट है और इसलिए सरकार प्रयास करती रही है और बैंकिंग व्यवस्था भी प्रयास करती रही है कि क्रेडिट कार्ड्स डेबिट कार्ड्स ई वॉलेट्स और जितने भी अल्टरनेटिव मेथड्स ऑफ डिजिटल करेंसी हैं उनको इनकरेज किया जाए और बहुत बड़े पैमाने में इस एक महीने में ये स्विच ओवर होता हुआ दिख रहा है Well, joining me for a chat right now is our correspondent Vishal Daya. Vishal, we saw the Prime Minister tweeting in a series of tweets earlier today. You know, asking the people uh, to just bear with him for a few more days and ensure that the he ensures that the situation will become far better, and urging the people really to go digital. The same was done by the Finance Minister Arun Jaitley as well. Well, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Frank, at uh, the press conference which was addressed by the finance minister just a short while back, uh, in that press conference, uh, the finance minister has announced eleven measures to. popularize the digital uh, mode of payment now this is uh, uh, what this process the government is terming this process as a uh, you know uh, as a transformation uh, from cash uh, uh, you know society to the less cash uh, society now, clearly uh, the aim of uh, uh, the government out here seems to be uh, ensuring that the uh, digital mode of payment is popularized uh, to a larger extent and uh, you know those transactions which are done by uh, the common people on a daily basis uh, uh, those uh, transactions should be uh, facilitated through the digital mode now out of those 11 uh, you know uh, uh, decisions which have been announced by uh, the finance minister some of them you have already mentioned that is uh, the petrol and diesel uh, will be cheaper uh, by 0.75% uh, uh, if you pay by card at the uh, you know um, the, uh, the 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 uh, psu owned uh, uh, petrol pumps apart from that uh, if uh, you know the the psu gic and lic that's the general insurance companies and life insurance companies if someone buys a policy from them online and that and the payment is made through digital mode then there will be a 10% discount on that as well this is going to be a huge uh, uh, you know um, uh, 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 kind of uh, a bonanza for those who would use that digital platform apart from that uh, there will be a 10% uh, uh, discount for those who use uh, rf uh, rfid tags or fast tags uh, at toll plazas similarly to uh, popularize the digital economy the government will ensure that there will be two pos machines uh, uh those uh, uh you know card swipe machines uh, which will be given to all villages uh, uh, which have a population of more than 10000 so in effect the government is taking 
all these steps to ensure that a digital mode of payment is popularized uh, at, a, at a you know larger uh, scale and uh, the transformation to the less cash economy is uh, somehow uh, in in one way or the other is uh, fast tracked all right vishal daya we like later that thank you so much for joining us there with those details and putting things into perspective for us there you have it of course uh, the finance minister there urging the people to go digital and has given out a, a few uh, uh, bonanzas there for people those who want to go digital meanwhile of course uh, the uh, opposition uh, gave uh, for, for, uh, came out in support or rather came out against uh, the demonetization move today and observed black day on the notes ban inside parliament as well Opposition lawmakers vote black bans as a mark of protest to mark one month of the government's ban on 500 and 1,000 rupee notes. Opposition parties observed a black day by staging a protest near Mahatma Gandhi's statue inside the parliament premises. The protest was led by Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi and leaders of Trinamool Congress, Janata Dal United, Samajwadi Party, Bahujan Samaj Party, the left parties, and the Rashtriya Janata Dal joined in. The loss of the loss is the loss of the loss. मजदूर का गरीब का मछी मार मछी मार का जो कैश की इकोनॉमी का प्रयोग करते हैं काले धन वाले सब भाग गए लाइन में आपको एक अमीर व्यक्ति नहीं दिखाई दिया सब के सब भाग गए उन्होंने सब अपना पैसा बदल दिया और कुड़ाल कुलाड़ी जाके लगी गरीबों पे हाउस को चलाने की जिम्मेदारी सरकार की और स्पीकर की है ऑपोजिशन की नहीं है हम चाहते हैं कि इस पर वोट हो क्योंकि हम जानते हैं कि अगर वोट होगा तो बीजेपी के अंदर से लोग वोट करेंगे हमारे पक्ष में इसलिए हम वोट चाहते हैं हम चाहते हैं कि प्रधानमंत्री जी अंदर आके बात करें इन रिस्पॉन्स द गवर्नमेंट कॉल द प्रोटेस्ट एंड इंसल्ट टू महात्मा गांधी सीनियर यूनियन मिनिस्टर वेंकैया नायडू डिस्क्राइब नवम्बर एट एज ए रेड लेटर डे अ हिस्टोरिक डे एंड सेट दो प्रोटेस्टिंग व सेलिब्रेटिंग ब्लैक मनी सपोर्टिंग डे अपोनेंट पटकर कांग्रेस पार्टी i'm told is observing today as a kala divas mai kahta hu ye kala dhan ke samardhan divas hai congress wale jo mana rahe wo kala dhan samardhan divas the opposition and the government have been at log ahead both inside and outside parliament since the decision was announced by the prime minister a month ago the opposition continues to demand for a discussion with a vote and that the prime minister be present and explain the notes ban the government has offered debate but says there will be no vote with inputs from navikram singh bureau report for rajya sabha tv well as the pass that we bicker over the how a debate will happen the common man continues to struggle due to a cash crunch and long queues in front of banks and atms meanwhile in an attempt to promote cashless payment the government has waived service tax on debit and credit card transactions of up to 2000 rupees here's more Exactly a month after the decision, the common man continues to reel under the severe cash crunch triggered by the demonetization. ATMs are running dry, even as banks struggle to arrange cash to meet the needs of the citizens. Above all, standing in long queues in front of the banks and the ATMs has become a physical and mental ordeal. The situation is grimmer in rural areas where many villages are unbanked. There is no problem because the rest of the swipe machine is being used. लेकिन जो किराया देना है रेंट देना है तो मकान मालिक काफ़ी प्रॉब्लम क्रिएट कर रहे हैं क्योंकि वो लोग कैश ले नहीं रहे हैं किसी भी तरीके से मतलब कैश ही ले रहे हैं सॉरी और तो डेली यहाँ पे पंद्रह हज़ार हम लोग का रेंट है तो आकर के डेली चार से पाँच घंटे लाइन में लगो और डेली एग्जाम्स हैं हम लोग के और क्लासेज हैं तो फिर बहुत मुश्किल हो रही है इस चीज़ को मैनेज करने में इतना हिसाब से निकल रहा है कि एक दो दिन में खर्चा हो जा रहा है फिर लाइन का लाइन में आ जा रहा है जो है इसमें कुछ सुधार होना चाहिए बहुत परेशान है इससे वैसे नहीं बहुत ज़्यादा ही परेशान है घर का जो घर का काम नहीं कर पाते बैंक का काम होता रहता है पहुंचते पहुंचते कैश खत्म हो जाता है वापस चले जाओ होल्डिंग प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट द नोट बैन द ऑपोजिशन हिट आउट एट द सेंटर दिल्ली चीफ मिनिस्टर अरविंद केजरीवाल वंस अगेन टारगेटेड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी ऑन द इशू एक नया पैसा अभी तक काले धन का नहीं आया और 
मोदी जी ने कहा पचास दिन दे दो तीस दिन तो पूरे हो गए तो तीस दिन में कुछ नहीं हुआ तो अब बीस दिन में और क्या हो जाएगा वेस्ट बंगाल चीफ मिनिस्टर ममता बैनर्जी ब्लेम द प्राइम मिनिस्टर वाइल अलेजिंग दैट नाइन्टी पीपल हैड लॉस्ट देयर लाइफ ड्यू टू डिमोनिटाइजेशन ही हैज टू टेक द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी how he misleaded this country without any planning and proper infrastructure even not availability of the currency he must take the responsibility he must clarify to the nation and people of this country india is the largest democratic country in mumbai andhra pradesh chief minister n chandra babu naidu led panel held its first formal meeting at the rbi headquarters to discuss a whole range of issues related to the notes ban Meanwhile in a bid to promote digital transactions the government reportedly decided to waive off service tax on debit and credit card transactions of up to 2000 rupees a notification to this effect will be tabled by finance minister arun jaitley with anu devan bureau report rajya sabha tv well, it's time for a short break now but news and updates will continue on the other side stay tuned we'll be right back इलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट का ट्रिपल तलाक पर आदेश कोई भी लॉ संविधान से ऊपर नहीं ट्रिपल तलाक को बताया महिलाओं पर क्रूरता देखिए पहली खबर ट्रिपल तलाक शाम सात बजे Welcome back you're watching Rajya Sabha television well the Allahabad high court today came down heavily on the practice of triple talaq stating that divorce by saying talaq three times is cruel and most demeaning the Allahabad high court order echoes the stand taken by the central government in the supreme court recently the court made the observations while dismissing the petition of the 23 year old hina and her 53 year old husband who divorced his wife to marry her In a major boost to women's rights, the Allahabad High Court on Thursday declared triple talaq unconstitutional, stating that no personal law board was above the constitution. Coming down heavily on the practice of triple talaq, the court said this form of instant divorce was cruel and demeaning, while holding that it violated rights of Muslim women. The court also said the view that the Muslim husband enjoys an arbitrary unilateral power to inflict instant divorce doesn't tie in with Islamic laws. I welcome the pronouncement by the Allahabad High Court today. It's 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 true that triple talaq is not Quranic. It's true that triple talaq is not constitutional. and it's true that triple talaq must be abolished from our country ye insaaf ek bahut bada paigham jayega ki hamari adalat hamare quran sharif ke qanoon ke anusar aur bharati samvidhan ke anusar hum logon ko insaaf de rahi hai aur islam ka qanoon bhi kabhi bhi unjust gair insaafi na insaafi nahi bardasht karta hai in october the government told the supreme court that triple talaq violated the fundamental rights guaranteed by the constitution It also said that it did not form a part of the essential religious practices in Islam. The government and other political parties welcomed the court's decision. मैं हर समय महसूस कर रहा हूँ अलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट का जजमेंट आप लोग जिक्र कर रहे हैं इससे मैं संतुष्ट हूँ कारण है देश में महिलाओं के साथ न्याय होना चाहिए ये सब का मत है और इसमें भेदभाव नहीं होना चाहिए. The time has come. It's an idea that's come of age now. It's something that has been making. the rounds and uh, murmurs from a long time i'm just happy that my muslim sisters have a little more security a little more dignity to their lives ye jo baat hai aitihasik faisla hai aur ye desh mein hamare jo muslim mataye hamare behne hai ab tak jis amanushtar krurta se wo jhuj rahi thi zindagi unki बस उनके लिए जिंदगी का एक बहुत बड़ा आशा का किरण है एक अच्छा फैसला है जिसको जिसका स्वागत पूरे समाज को करना चाहिए और सियासत से ऊपर उठ के समाज और देश के हित में फैसला है इस्लामिक कानून नहीं गलत व्याख्या कर रहा है कुछ इस्लामिक जो विद्वान हैं वो इसकी व्याख्या गलत कर रहे हैं 
The All India Muslim Personal Law Board, however, criticized the court's order, stating that it was against Sharia laws that cannot be modified by any court. And as far as uh, the law of triple talaq um, uh, to be said to, is being said to be unconstitutional is concerned, I think that uh, the constitution of our country has given us the right to profess and practice uh, our religion. And Muslim personal law and the law of triple talaq are very much the integral part of our religion. Triple talaq, a practice sanctioned under Muslim personal law that governs marriage, property and divorce, is one of India's most contentious religious issues. It has already been taken to the Supreme Court by several women. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, three Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorists were killed in an encounter in Arwani area of Jammu and Kashmir's Anantnag district on Thursday. The combing operation is currently underway. Fresh exchange of fire started between terrorists and security forces in Anantnag district in the early morning. Mobile phone and internet services were suspended in South Kashmir, Anantnag district as the gunfight raged. Earlier in the day, the railway authorities suspended train services from uh, Burgam, Banihal due to the encounter. Clashes uh, between stone-pelting protesters and security forces also erupted at various other places in South Kashmir. Well, here's a roundup of the other national news in Nationwide. Thick fog engulfed uh, the national capital on Thursday morning, leading to cancellation of two train services, while 94 others were running behind schedule by several hours due to poor visibility. Flight operations at the international airport were not affected. Foggy weather conditions are a result of easterly winds, resulting in the increase in moisture levels. The centre has issued a notification saying 15 new casts have been included in the central list of other backward classes. These 15 casts were out of the 28 changes recommended by the National Commission for Backward Classes. Last month, the Union Cabinet, chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, had approved the proposal of NCBC. A divisional bench of the Kerala High Court on Thursday ordered that women should not be allowed to wear salwar kameez and chudidar inside the Sri uh, Padmanabhashwari temple. Uh, the order also states that the decision of the chief priest is final and the temple board does not have the authority to make the rules. Home Minister Rajnath Singh has said all tourists at Havelock Island in the Andamans who are stuck due to cyclonic conditions are safe and efforts are on for their early evacuation. Singh called up a Lieutenant Governor of Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Jagdish Mukhi, and inquired about the status of the stranded tourists. Along to some cricket news now, uh, England ended the first day of the fourth test on 288 for five in Mumbai on a fluctuating day of test cricket. Opting to bat first, England threatened to run away with the match with the opening pair scoring 99 runs for the first wicket. Debutant Keaton Jennings then scored a century as the visitors went into tea at a strong 196 for two. However, in the final session, Ravichandran Ashwin brought India roaring back into the match with two quick wickets, including that of Centurion Keaton on 112. The spinner then claimed one more to finish the day with four wickets for 75 runs. At stumps, Ben Stokes and Joss Butler were at the crease with 39 runs, sixth wicket partnership. Well, that's it on this newscast. Have a good evening.